Okay, we're gonna take some time to try to draw this camera box that it's sitting on uh, from an elevated position or a vantage point that I will necessitate a three-point perspective relationship. Um, so again, we're looking at our subject from above, looking down at it. I'm looking at this side going away from me, this side going away from me, and the vertical space receding away from me. So instead of my line of sight being positioned kind of horizontally, looking out into the plane of uh, the earth, the ground plane, my picture plane is tilted. So my piece of paper represents that. I'm looking down into the scene. So the line of sight comes away from my eye, down into my subject matter in this case. And so that becomes the reference point uh, where you say, what's vertical? What are we truly looking at that will be straight? And where will uh, that kind of fanning away from a center vanishing point or, or central vision, where will that change? So one of the things I, I usually start with, and um, I'm gonna shift into a, a better view of this in a few minutes, but I wanna see and share what I'm, I'm looking at while I'm doing this. This is my vertical. So the vertical vanishing point is gonna be down off the picture here. I'm gonna label it here, vertical vanishing point, just inside the screen. So what am I looking at? I, I generally speaking won't put it right in the middle generally. Uh, I might put it on this line, uh, something internal so that the big form feels like it will have uh, some indication of that diagonal relationship. So I'm gonna start with that. Uh, my secondary two vanishing points, the, the right and left ones, uh, they're gonna be well outside my paper and so will my vertical one. Um, so this is gonna be just big enough that we can see it as I'm looking at it, but what I'm gonna look at here is an angle. So I'm trying to hit the picture plane essentially like this and twist my pencil to match that. If I start pushing inward uh, and foreshortening, it's gonna change the relationship that I'm gonna have. I'll try to bring it over here and literally drag that line out and then I'll, I'll double check, bring that over, see if it's accurate. I'm gonna do the same thing with the short side that I'm able to see and it's gonna be much more extreme. Again, I'm gonna take that back, see if I like it. And again, I have not made a, a, a um, proportional measurement yet. I could choose to make it end here and I, I think I will. It's gonna be somewhat relative to where I've established this, this vertical, but that may not be in your picture yet. Uh, I might bring it in a little bit. All right. If I'm happy with that, I'm gonna test it by continuing to establish the first two vanishing points. Now I have a definite width. I'm gonna take that length that I'm visibly able to see and compare it to the depth that I can see. So when I do that, and I go like this, I'm judging this proportionally by eye here. And then I'm gonna flick my eyes from here, back to there, here, back to there, and um, see, see how it feels. Remember to draw through. I wanna see those lines extend so that this is uh, a continuation. It feels like this could go into another object behind it, and it's gonna help you plot these things out a little bit better. Well, so for right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this and see if it needs a change later. But again, I've got the top plane figured out. I don't move on until I'm kind of happy with it. And then I'll move to the vertical. So if I say this is the vertical right here, this silver line, that edge, then as I move to the right side, I'm still, I wanna look at this line while I judge this. And I'll drop a plumb line, drop a straight line with gravity. Look at that one line and judge this from that. So it's gonna be very subtle. I want though some convergence. So it's getting closer to uh, the, the vanishing point at your feet, basically. When I move over to this side, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Judge this by its relationship to the other form, uh, the other line. It's important here 
to make sure that there is convergence, but not too much convergence. If there's too much, it's going to start to become the same angle as that side plane, right? But I can see this side. So it has to have a little bit of an angle break there, or things are going to be completely off. Extend these lines long enough out of your picture so that you can feel that convergence. And for right now, now I'm going to move back here so we can see it uh, drawn a little bit better. And it's, it's rough, right? It's, it's not designed to be a perfect drawing, but if anything feels like it's going to cause you problems while you're drawing it, clean it up. But don't leave it completely just contour line. I, I want to see lines extend. You know, this, this line could extend. I want to feel those lines uh, move into the next form, if you will. Now I need to figure out the height. And I'm going to take, again, a measurement, judging width against height. And see that it's going to be very close. At least in terms of the first part of the box. Very similar. Because, even though the camera is absolutely taller than it is wide up here, foreshortening of the height is squishing it shorter. I'm just judging that angle, measure it out. Because my points are not able to be on the page, I want to see what that angle is. And before I move any further, I just want to make sure that that feels like a, a gentle continuation and that it would feel like it would converge. I'm going to do the same thing here. And since I, I just moved my feet and, and kind of walked over um, to a different position, it's important that you remember to keep your vantage point or station point consistent. If you have not fixed your position and you're, you're bouncing your head up and down and moving it around, shifting around in your chair, wherever you're Wherever you're at, if it's not consistent, it's going to change your perspective. So you do need to make sure that you're able to get back into a consistent position. But at this point, I have everything I need. Uh, this is in three point. It has convergence vertically. It has convergence uh, to the two sides as well. So from here, I'm going to continue to build off. Uh, so looking at... The object again right there, we can see that it has a, a level here. I'm going to build that up in space right on top of it from a midpoint. And I could do that off the, the front because I'm going to need that, or I could do it off the, the top. Either way will work, but it's important here because I'm going to take a vertical line that this is a halfway point. It means it's symmetrical, it's parallel. That means that line's got to converge too. Um, so if it doesn't feel like it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom, you need to, you need to correct. Uh, where it hit here, I should be able to take that back into space. And again, it should converge with those vanishing uh, orthogonals and, and, and lines that go back. And just to double check, take an X through this. If it's a little off like it is right there, then maybe I double check something. Yeah, this could move over just, just slightly. Because I'm not using a ruler, I want to be vigilant about keeping track of what's happening. And anytime you have an opportunity to double check something. Uh, we take it. Okay, now here I'm going to add height. So I'm going to extend this vertical line up. And I, I'm, I'm more or less just eyeballing it. I'm not going to measure something that short. This was my vertical. I'm going to shift over slightly. And where that shifted, I'm going to take that across this X, a little bit lower. Where it hits here, I can put 
a symmetrical relationship. Again, this is going to converge downward. This is going downward to that vanishing point. So this has a silver front panel uh, that has a distance on either side. I want to keep those consistent, right? And then it's going to extend upward. It's going to extend upward here as well. On the sides, it's got a little bevel. Where that crossed that X, I can take that across to find where that bevel happens on the other side. What that ensures is that we have a thicker side here, slightly narrower side there because I'm closer to this, it should appear bigger. And at this point, I'm just going to continue dissecting, building up. Uh, the the three-point idea is basically set into stone, though, at this point. Uh, so this will just be a continuation of thinking about diagrammatic perspective. I'm going to look over top of my subject and see where does this top panel end or, or surface kind of rise up. Again, I'm going to draw as if it's transparent. I'm going to draw through it. It definitely has uh, less width in the front. In fact, it kind of comes right to the edge here. It's a little uh, curved and rounded, but the back has, you know, about half an inch. So there's a greater amount back there, but I'm doing it across this midpoint. And uh, whatever I built up on the front here, I'm going to take that back into perspective as well and build up from this line here. So I have now essentially a plane cutting up like a, it's a tennis court on top here with a net in the middle. And that's just to maintain a, a believable kind of distance and, and width uh, that I'm able to kind of conclude back here. Secondarily, that has a slant. So in this is a vertical. Imagine now it's been lopped off diagonally there. And I'm cutting it in almost to the point where it's tangent with that back. It's, it's actually inward just slightly. So just under that line, I'm going to take another line. This is where line weight can help you in your diagramming. If I add a little more weight there, it's going to feel like it's closer to us than that back edge. Okay, so that's now the thing that's close to me. If I was drawing it transparently, I'd put a little dashed line just to imply that that's a declining plane going away from you. My silver panel on the front is going to extend backward across the top plane. And all these lines that I've drawn in now represent intermediate angles that I can use to not feel like I've got to measure with my pencil all the time and bring that line over here. As long as I can make it look like it's converging between those two, then it's, it's going to be pretty close, pretty, pretty accurate. Okay. Uh, just like this back edge was inclining. So is this side plane here. Uh, but there is a thickness that gets added on and rounded out. And so if I look at a, a dashed kind of line here, it comes up. I'm going to continue that thickness on this side. Bring that line up just a little bit. And it curves over. Bring that line up like this. Drop that line down like so. All right, so hopefully we can start to see what's happening here. This is a little curvature, and I'm going to do that within the box form. Look for relationships um, if they exist. If this actually is kind of a softer edge, I might even put a kind of double line or I might put a cross contour line. Um, and I would do that, you know, if, if I'm thinking thoughtfully, I'd do that in the middle of the top plane. So 
So cross contour line like that, carry it over, drops down like that, and then this goes across, across. And in fact, this will round out as well. So the cross contour is a good way to uh, help you communicate to the viewer what's going on. Because we're not going to shade these, right? So the shading would help with the cross contour, uh, making the cross contour irrelevant. All right. Before I get into to more details in there, I'm going to take a look at the lenses that are happening on this. And it, it's super important that you really look at what's happening. How low do they, they start? Start a little lower. So I'm looking at a horizontal. Well, diagonal actually, but something that's parallel to the bottom and the top there. Just to say, this is where, if this is the midpoint, this is where that lens is going to attach. It's the beginning of it. That's just to help me see things a little bit better. I'm only going to be able to see the front ellipse of the lens completely, right? Let's, let's look at the, the camera again right there. So we can see this front plane better. We can only see the top curve on that back plane. And so I have to make sure that I get an accurate read. It's going to come forward. Not a huge amount of distance. So I'm going to say it's about there. Now I can see this ellipse completely. I can take a measurement of this ellipse. How tall is it compared to something else? Maybe compared to the distance uh, from uh, this corner right there to right there, it is almost exactly the same. Always good if you can find a, a measurement like that. But before I say, yes, that's right, I'm going to take another uh, measurement or I'm going to look at something else to see if that's, if I can confirm it or if I can disprove it, right? So one of the things I was looking at is where does this cross? And if I lower this a little bit, because I think it might be just a touch short. Then my measurement lines up. So I'm going to do that. Doesn't change much of anything. In fact, I think it makes that connect a little bit better. I'm going to go with that. So this is where I have then a new box drawn in to describe the ellipse here. The side plane here of the front panel is going to be what I'm looking at to help determine where this goes in, in terms of the vertical lines. Um, because it overlaps here, I see less, I see a lot more here. I think it needs to come in a little bit more. And I'm going to run with that. Meaning, again, get rid of things that might confuse you. So I'm going to lighten those uh, lines in the background a little bit. Sometimes you'll take a piece of tracing paper or you might dash your, your marks so that it's easier to tell what's what. all in service of trying to get those connections, those points of tangency with the ellipse and the box that I've just drawn. And at this point, I'm, I'm looking at the diagram. I'm not looking at the object. I'm going to look at the object once I've drawn it in. Where does it end up being a little too close to the subject's uh, bounding box? And where does it need to kind of adjust? Now, now I'm looking at the object again. I squint your eyes. Sometimes you see too much and you need to just see the big shape. Squint your eyes. Really adjust and, and be aware of the angle that you see. 
is it's it's in a position that's not going to be a, a vertical ellipse. It's kind of lean. And try not to be, you know, if there's multiple uh, bevels and variations to it, try to see the big shape before you see all the individual, the lens and the, the thickness. Uh, be, be okay with that before you move on. Um, and, and by all means, you can draw another box back here to fit this. Um, but I usually will take this, maybe trace around it like this, and then I'm going to go and do the same thing. And I literally will try to trace it behind it. That's the only way you ensure that you, you extend it where you need to. This is going to connect. It's going to connect. So there's just this little bit of depth and make sure that that depth, this is easy to, to screw up, that that depth goes back to that left vanishing point on this side, left vanishing point. So we see that coming forward, hopefully off of, off of the camera. If anything is screwed up, if you want to adjust the depth a little bit, uh, then you do that now. You know, I, I may in fact actually want to bring it out wider a little bit. and bring this down just a little bit as well. When I do that, I've got to double check things because I've erased some, some marks. That that highest point there, highest point there, if you will, connect and line up in perspective still. And we can, we can obsess about this a little bit, but you don't want to get into the, the tighter details without having a confident uh, base. But I, I think that'll be good enough. Looking at the, there being a second lens here. And what, how does it line up? Look at your subject. Stand in the position where you can see it. Say, is it is it the same width? Or is it a little narrower? Because you can make those relationships happen. How far up off of the ground plane does it hit? It just tucks in behind that lens a little bit. And it's sunken in a little bit. So if I take this line, that doesn't work. It's got to be back a little bit. Erase the lines that are wrong. Including any X's that exist in there. That may need to shift now. There we go. It's going up behind it slightly. It's a little egg, a little off in terms of balance to the ellipse. So keep an eye on that. This has very subtle depth. 
uh, but there will be points that need to be visible in relationship to the top lens in terms of an overlap, meaning I can see a little bit of distance right there. And so it's a, it's a thing that forces a change here. Like literally, I want to adjust the whole thing out of the way. So hopefully you, you'll notice I'm not precious with this. And if something is wrong, I will correct it, including erasing it out for a demo. Okay, so the front one is here. This one gets moved back slightly in space because it's not to the same level. But I need it to come outward on the right side just a little bit. That's why I erased it. And that should work better so that I can take the depth that is visible just beyond there. So it's as picky as it is, that little space is something that I see there. And if I didn't see it in the drawing, then something is off. Okay. Now, we can keep going here and, and just continue finessing things that I see. The panel... The silver panel on the outside has a little rounded corner. There are two little screws and they're in relationship to that vertical so I can build it off of it. Likewise, it's in relationship to it over here. Build it off of it. But I, I, might, uh, I might double check now this location. This needs to be a little wider. Not a lot, just a little. And then I'm gonna double check this, maybe that'll be okay. It feels better now, it looks like there's more proportional uh, variation. I am gonna add a little bit more to the bottom. Again, I'm looking at this and it still feels like it wants to be a little taller. There's some curvature. So just rounding out the base a little bit. Uh, as I as I continue this line, this line can go back into space on that side, and it will wrap around and give us a little bit of a depth, uh, such that I can even add just a little bit on that outside, so that it feels like it tucks around. Which means on the other side, I can carry this line all the way back uh, to that left vanishing point. To imply that this height is now that height, and it's just that much foreshortened because of that positioning and vantage point. Alright, so these corners are rounded. Uh, the top corners are rounded as well. Carry that around. And try to keep it proportional in terms of what happens over here. Close enough. Rounding this. This corner I would end up kind of blurring, if I'm being honest, uh, because of that cross contour relationship that you might find there. It's not a it's not a firm edge. What's going to help it honestly is similar to the base uh, that the top edge, you know, in relationship to this line again has a band that wraps around it. In this case, up here, it overlaps this line, meaning I want it to come out a little bit there. This is gonna go back into perspective again. That implies the rounded corner for me, even though the actual corner would be sort of softened right in there. Okay, so it's all about little 
little details, dropping in a lens in there in a few minutes, um, and just moving around and being particular about things like there's a, a little notch there. Where does that notch happen on the opposite side? Finding the symmetry, bringing that up and over, curvature. Um, so it, this feels like a, a cylinder, if you will, kind of going around, around, around. And on top of it, there's a, there's a little form here. Give it a little thickness, if you will. And it has a little curve to it. And so it has some thickness on that. So the, the thicker line represents some height, drops back. Uh, on the top, there's a logo. And I've already got my X, um, so you could fit a logo design within a box on the top plane. I'm not going to worry about drawing it right now, but I might imply that something is going to go there. Uh, likewise, there is uh, typography here on the front. And anytime you've got type, uh, you, you want to think about a box for it first. So typography would fit in there. Uh, you can literally count uh, the letter forms off even. I'm going to actually shorten it a touch. And say there's five letters, you divide it up into parts, one, two, three, four. So work on that until you get the proportion close. Some letter forms are wider than others. And that gives you a box to draw within so that you're not trying to freeform it. Uh, let's see, that, that leaves uh, kind of final touches here. Down here, there's a little uh, switch gets built off. Relationships, again, I would look at where does it land in, in terms of the symmetry of the, the lens. It has a curving relationship here as well. A helpful item to kind of imply that so uh, we're looking down on this curved form and say keep an eye on how sharp that curve is so it, it can be useful to take that straight diagonal before you get into the curve because you can over overdo it a little bit maybe like I did on that first one and this this moment actually feels flatter. So it creates this little uh, space and gap in there. And I'm just gonna speed this process up a little bit. We've got a, a little shade there to help clarify that ledge, uh, putting in a little uh, detail that has a circle seen in perspective, so it needs to have that similar slant that we're able to see on the lenses. I'm gonna go in and refine the lens uh, the curvature a little bit at this point. There's a thickness and a slanted kind of beveled surface that uh, we're going to look at how different that thickness is as it wraps around and curves around. So the very top edge is going to be closer to us and so it needs to be thicker even if it's so imperceptible for us. And now I'm looking at clarifying the bevel. So at the top there, it's foreshortened. We're not able to see it um, because we've got a, a lip overhanging it. But I'm looking at where it reappears. So it's thick at the base and then it comes out from that front edge. And I looked at a vertical line relating to where the text was defined right about on that side. And creating a kind of crescent moon shape uh, and then re really evaluating whether or not it goes closer to that outer edge or not and making a correction. As we look at the lens inside there, it absolutely has to feel like it goes behind it. It's so easy to uh, miss the, the curvature on that ellipse if you're not careful. So trying to see it go behind 
as much as possible. And if you don't put it down on paper, then you're kind of circling it in the air and then you lay down the stroke uh, confidently. Adding thickness uh, to the outside and correcting stuff. And nothing is set in stone until it's done. Keeping things flexible and movable so not getting too heavy handed is really important. Uh, so that back edge there, I really want it to feel like it goes behind this and when I pull that line from the perspective, that even if it's only a, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch in length, it still needs to feel like it goes back in space. So I'm, I'm really pointing to that and directing that line back there, even if it's small. Again, the, the lens at the bottom is inset a little bit. It's not coming out quite as far as the top lens. So it has to overlap, has to feel like it overlaps. And again, on this, we're looking at that bottom thickness being uh, stronger and thicker than the front uh, or the top edge because it uh, slants inward. And I'm just kind of smudging over top so that the line that I put in there isn't as sharp or firm. Gives it a little blur uh, because the inside of that lens, is a, it's a softer shape. All right, thinking about the attachment of a strap, laying that in there, and then there's a knob uh, that uh, attaches to the side here, so creating a plane, and then a, a horizontal line that goes back to the, the right vanishing point to kind of create a box there. And I'm gonna look at the shape of it having kind of a dome-like quality here. And then on the lips on this side, a little bit of depth gets clipped off. Another curve. It attaches. That attachment has dimension. And we're going to look at the straps. Uh, very organic form. It's not really about uh, making a perfect uh, perspective relationship, but I'm looking at this strap and trying to make it do something interesting not being beholden to where it just lays i want to look at the shape and not obscure something important so it's going over the corner here but i'm still able to manage the attachment of this top plane to the surface the strap has a twist uh, and i'm shading it just so you all can see that relationship a little more clearly and i'm giving it a little thickness kind of like a shoelace if you will and then looking at kind of affecting again an interesting shape over here. So it twists pretty quickly. I'm giving it thickness, letting it go back. It gets very thin. Then I'm able to see the underside. So you look for outer edges to become inner edges and vice versa. I'm also letting it fade back behind the front corner as a lighter line, a, a looser line, if you will. And keeping it uh, very, very lively back there. It's a, it's an organic uh, mark. I'm trying to find a difference between uh, the, the main camera body. But we're finished up here. Just maintaining that rhythm of the verticals. That's an important thing. Looking at foreshortening as it drops down and gets narrower as we go. Look at that thickness change. So happy drawing. <laughs>